started. So today I am talking about blame, shame, and complaining. And what really prompted me to talk about this is, oh, I'm gonna oh. manage these, hold on. I'm just muting everybody. So what made me wanna talk about this is I feel like so often in our life, we get wrapped in this um, conversation of, um, blaming other people or looking for one thing that's really common in my house and I see it with my kids mostly is whose fault is that and asking like whose fault is it that this happened or that that happened um, or complaining about other people complaining is probably the main one um, that most of us fall guilty of is complaining about your job complaining about your significant other complaining about your kids complaining about your finances complaining about the way you look complaining about the way you feel like complaining is probably the one that we can um resonate with the most and then shaming i threw that in there because shaming is one that i'm actually working on right now i have a parenting coach mentor who i'm working with to be a better mom because it's so interesting it's like people come to me all the time like you have five kids how do you do it and blah 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 and while i do it well and i am a good mom i also feel like i'm not a good mom because there's there's many areas of me that i'm not the best um i have i, I up until now now is my new way of saying this because I've been doing a lot of work on this. So in, I, what I realized was I, um, the, the story that I'm claiming about my past I, is no longer. So up until now, I've been <clears throat> a very shaming type of mom. I lacked a lot of intimacy, a lot of connection. So what that would look like as a mom is I was doing motherhood, but I wasn't being a good mother. And what I mean by that is like, I was always there. I was, I'm a stay at home mom, so I'm always there, but I was always cooking, cleaning. Hold on, mommy's gotta do this. Hold on, mommy's gotta do that. Shh, be quiet, mommy's gotta call. So I was working at home. And so I was doing all these things, but never doing anything fully. And so, as it affected my kids, it was like I was never fully present. I was not connected with them. And then how it was affecting my business was nothing was really moving forward because I was never fully doing anything. I was just always like, oh, one's napping. Let me go do something real quick. Oh, okay, one's doing this. And, and it's possible to grow a business that way, but you really get to be strategic. And so I realized that um, I, I have a lot of growth to do in my motherhood area and I hired a coach. And one of the things we're focusing on right now is shame and um, realizing how often shame comes out of our mouth and we don't even realize that we're shaming. So things like don't cry, big girls don't cry. That's the big one that we say around here. Um, or um, your your sister doesn't do that. Or, or like one that I would do is like I live, like I'm getting ready to do a five-day challenge. I'm not comparing yourself to people. And I feel like that can impact you, whether it's improving your relationship, improving who you are and how you love yourself, improving how you show up as a parent, improving your business. When we compare ourselves, we not, not only rob our own joy, but we take away from our own power. And so I, I stand for this. I'm teaching this I'm creating a whole program around not comparing but I compare all the time and I'll do it in ways of like telling my daughters like oh such and such was eating that for lunch or such and such did this with their parents and I'll like tell a story but my underlying tone is to compare and be like you should be doing that too that's a form of shaming so blaming shaming and complaining whichever one you can resonate with we're all guilty of all three at some point in our life whether it's in your parenting a lot of us shame complain and blame our significant others that's a big one that's a big one that I've worked on that I've I'm working on and so I wanted to just prepare some thoughts for you guys around how those three acts of being are robbing you from being your best self and they're ruining your relationships. So um, the first one really is, um, is blaming. So to put blame on somebody is really at the end of the day to take responsibility off of yourself. And it's to say like, this happened because of you and what you did. And what I wanna point out when it comes to blame is that everything that happens in life, we are responsible for creating somehow, some way. We, did something it takes two to tango so anytime 
you find yourself blaming somebody else, what you can do instead is you could ask that person, you could ask yourself first and foremost, you could evaluate, you could become, become self-aware, you could look at the situation and say, um, basically, what did I have to do with this situation? How did I create this for, from happening? Because like, what role did I play in it, right? And so, um, like I'm trying to think of a mo most immediate example. Um, and maybe if I'm going to be like super transparent, I'll use the one that just happened right now. So my husband just tagged me in a post on Instagram that was like, he's like boxing and like dodging punches. And he, his caption was, this is how I need Crystal to dodge DMs and text messages. So we had a little happening of a text message situation that I had with a male and me and him are both, both crazy. And we have these boundaries about not texting the opposite sex, having boundaries when it comes to that. And, um, in my, I mind I was justifying this interaction with this male because I felt like it was justifiable for a number of reasons and I'm not going to go all the way into this because of privacy there is like as much as I'm an open book I do have a lot of things that I keep private and that's just because that's what works in marriages that's what works in life and so like without revealing the whole thing I was justifying this thing. So then when we blew up and got in a fight over it, I was blaming him. I was saying like, you're mad, you're overreacting, you're doing this, you, you, you. And I was pointing the fingers. And then I was complaining about how, like, I don't understand why you're on me. Like, this is ridiculous, da, da, da. And so I'm complaining about it. And then I was even probably throwing in some shame because I was bringing up old stuff. I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna feel the heat on me um texting i wanted to just like be like well let's not go through the list of inappropriate interactions you've had and i'm like doing this and throwing back stuff and so i did all of the above this just happened yesterday if i really stop and if i really stop and ask myself what role did i play in this well here's the the god to, the honest to god truth I knew that there was a chance in the back of my head that texting in this situation could be inappropriate because it's a, a male counterpart, period. It doesn't matter if it's justifiable, which it is, because it was nothing shady, it was nothing bad, and this is why I was going to bat so hard with the blaming and complaining about my husband getting mad, because I'm like, oh, please, like, it's, a, it's nothing, like, blah, blah, blah. But if I'm being honest, deep down inside of me was like, oh yes, I'm about to be interacting with the opposite sex because all the years and times that he, he as in my husband crossed that line and um, like it went over that boundary and it was interacting, whether it was a DM, um, we've gotten fights many a times over things like that, whatever it might be, underlying deep down quickly my subconscious most definitely was like oh yes like i can justify this one it's safe i know that it's okay i know that there's nothing going on but i'm gonna enjoy it because this is what he gets like he's gonna get a taste of his own medicine not even intending that my husband would even know that this was taking place it wasn't even that deep it was just i will admit that somewhere inside of me that came up so i'm using this example to go back to the place of when you're in a situation ask yourself what role did you play I shared this last week when I talked about um, having those tough conversations and confronting situations and um, with I shared the story and example with my sister again I was pointing the finger at her saying you're this you're doing that you're not inviting me you're blah 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 and I was putting you 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 and not looking at what I had in to do with it and so um, when it comes to blaming, you really get to stop and ask yourself, what do you, what role do you play in this situation? And then you get to at, go further and ask yourself, what happened that's causing you to blame somebody? And then where are you playing victim? Because at the end of the day, and I like, I know this, but I just went to this le leadership training um, lot a week ago, and we talked about responsibility and how everything that happens in our life, we're responsible for creating it. And what was interesting about that when it comes to blaming and, and being a victim is 
you don't get to be a victim. Like if you are finding yourself being a victim in your life, then you're not in your power and you're giving up your power to that situation. You're falling victim to your circumstance. So in order to not be a victim to your circumstance, whether it's your finances, whether it's your job, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your kids, whether it's, um, you know, like your kids could be acting out and you're complaining and falling victim, like, oh my God, my kids are crazy and I'm just like stressed out and I'm overwhelmed and da da da. Well, what role as a parent do you have? That's what I was doing. And then I realized, well, you're not being the best parent. You're not being present. You're not being connected. So of course your kids are acting out. They're looking for attention. They're looking for connection. Um, if your significant other is acting out and you're feeling victim to them not being connected, them not being whatever, most definitely it could have everything to do with their upbringing with their past with their daddy issues mommy issues not knowing how to treat a woman right um being self-consumed being a narcissist it could definitely be their fault in the sense that they are not being who you need them to be but guess what role you play in that you're you're in the relationship you are deciding choosing to be the significant other to that no good person so if you're going to complain and blame them and be a victim to their their being, then you either get to stand in your power and, and demand that you get treated di differently and risk that relationship like going separate ways, or you get to get out of that relationship and stop being a victim of it and complaining. And this is one of the biggest things that I see happen in relationships is people will complain and complain, and my husband this, and my boyfriend that, and my fiance this, and, and my friend that, and my this person, my parent, my coworker, and you'll complain, 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 and shame and blame and fall victim to what somebody else is doing to you. But what you're not choosing, what you're not changing, you're choosing. So you either get to change and get out of it it and remove yourself from that relationship whether whoever it is or that situation or you get to stand in your power and be the change that you want to see and be love and be forgiving and be um like um basically like so this is separate but it, it'll give you an example i was sharing this advice with somebody yesterday they are going through it in their marriage their marriage is on the rocks and they're basically like i don't know i'm at this crossroads where i'm either gonna heal it or get out of it and my advice was if you know that you're done and you know that that other person is done fighting for the relationship then go your separate ways and you guys go do life separately but if you guys both or at least one of you guys is in it for the long haul and you want to fix this and make it right, then, then this is what I believe keeps relationships alive. It's one person holding on when the other one is letting go. Sometimes you're gonna be the only one fighting for a relationship, whether that's your marriage, your um, friendships or whatever. Sometimes you're the only one in it. And that's where love comes in because love is unconditional and love shows up even when the other person is not giving to you. And so, if you're in a relationship where you're not getting treated right or, and I don't mean treated like you're just getting abused. Like I, I there's just some situations you got to follow your gut and get yourself out of it. Right. But if you feel like it's worth fighting for, if you feel like you're down for the ride of helping this person change and become a better version of themselves, because you believe that they're willing to do that, then you get to not complain, blame and shame this person for being who you're willing to stick around to be there for, if that makes sense. And so if you're going to choose to stay in a shitty relationship, whether it's a friendship, a job that you don't like, it, there's people who complain every single day about their job. I hate my job. I hate my job. I hate my coworkers. I hate my boss. I hate this. I hate that. Then why are you still working there? So you either get to stay working there and see what you love about your job and your boss. I love that I have a security of a paycheck because that's usually why people stay in their jobs. I don't want to quit. I hate what I'm doing. There's a hundred other things I would rather be doing, but I stay in my job because I want that same paycheck every single month so I can pay my bills and survive. So if you're okay with that, then see that as the bright side and stop complaining and blaming and shaming other people because you're choosing to be there at that job that you hate or you're choosing to be in that relationship that you're getting maltreated. So um, I hope that that makes sense. Um, and I'm kind of, sorry, I'm having like a reaction, but I'm kind of blending these. I took notes so that I would stay in track, but I'm kind of blame, blending blame, shame, and complain. And that's kind of why they all fell into this one category because they kind of are like, friends they like hang out they're like the same emotion of putting the 
the reason for me being unhappy, the reason for me being unsatisfied, the reason for me being hurt, the reason for me being X, Y, Z is because of you. And I'm complaining about you and I'm blaming you and I'm shaming you. So they're all kind of in that same family. And what I'm really telling you today, the power that I'm, I'm enlisting you with today is to realize that you have the power to not be a victim of any circumstance and not be um, complaining because you can see the bright side, you can see the good side of people, and you can see how you have played a role in this and you can work on yourself. So for me, like going back to the example that I gave you, I get to choose to recognize where like, yeah, I was wrong. And instead, like, it, at first, I was throwing the all the cards and I like, I've shared this before, like, you he doesn't want to argue with me like I will go to bat and I got like this and that and I could like hit you with the one two and three but I had to stop in that moment and realize like that those are all valid points but they're not addressing my part of where I was in the wrong and where I could be better and I could show it better and so I just showed up and decided to stop throwing the stones and the one two three and really just stand in the heat of I I um, took part in this wrongdoing and I'm going to take responsibility for it. And that's what it looks like to keep a healthy relationship. That's what it looks like to move your life forward and save your energy instead of like, if there's anything in your life that you're complaining about right now, you're wasting your energy. You're wasting your breath. Like I, um, I, heard this analogy at the leadership training that I just did. And it was like so powerful. They were talking about how if you're traveling somewhere and you have a plane to catch and you're going, you know, I live in Cali. So, and I'm actually catching a plane tomorrow night to New York. So if I miss my God forbid, cause I need to get there. If I miss my plane to New York, and I sit there on the phone and call my husband like, oh, I should have did this. And this, this flight attendant, she was taking forever on the phone and she was talking. I don't even know what she was talking about. And then she made me late. And then I was in line and this family was taking forever to get all their stuff together. And they should have just did this. And I'm complaining about why I was late. I should have left earlier. There was traffic. I blah, blah, blah. I could spend all this time complaining about why and how it's justifiable and maybe those factors did factor into why I missed my plane. But the reality is, is the plane is gone. So the only solution now is to spend my energy in the past, which I'm never going to get that plane coming back to pick me up. My only option is to move myself forward. And well, it's not the only option, but the most productive option for my life is to move my life forward and figure out what's the next plane that I can catch because I need to get to New York. And so how often in your life are you talking and spending energy on a missed plane and not moving your life forward by catching the next one and just figuring out what do I do now? Okay, now what? I miss that plane shit. This sucks. Now what? And that's basically what life is all about. It's choices. Every minute of your day is a choice to reinvent who you are and how you're showing up in the world. And it's an opportunity to choose the better choice of the two and to choose to spend your, your focus and your energy on solution mode versus problem mode. So you hate your job. How can you do, what can you do with that energy to focus on getting out of that job you hate? So you hate your relationship. Who are you being in your relationship that can maybe spark your significant other to be a better version of themselves because you're being a better version of yourself. How can you focus on yourself so that it impacts everybody around you? Um, and so, um, I just want to see, cause I kind of feel like I'm wrapping this up cause I'm beating down this point, but I just want to see if there's anything I wrote down that I didn't say. Um, oh, um, one of the things that I did say was um, like, well, that's like a whole nother talk. Um, but yeah, so I'll just wrap it there because I really want to keep these um, keep these short and sweet and I'll open it up if anybody has any comments, questions or anything. But um, the moral of today's like topic is anytime you catch yourself blaming somebody else, and this this should be pretty easy to do. Like I really want to challenge you guys to do this now. Every time you open your mouth to talk about something, I want you to at, like recognize and notice two things. One, 
am I talking about a missed plane or am I talking about the plane that I'm getting ready to catch? And two, am I casting blame, shame, or complaint towards something or somebody? And so it's interesting because I, um, I was talking to somebody re like recently and I don't remember who when, and where, but they were saying how um, a lot of people wouldn't like me in their hometown. And I was like, that's interesting because usually people like take to me because I'm so like open to everybody and I'm, I'm loving and I'm like, I'm just like even keel when it comes to all situations that I in, in, enter. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? Like, why do you say that? And she was like, because you're always so happy and optimistic and positive. And I was like, dang. And so for a quick second, I took that as like, is this a compliment or is it like a, is it a downfall? And it's interesting because there's a lot of people around me who are not always con like um, positive and optimistic. And so I got to choose in that moment that I want to be the positive and optimistic person and God willing, like I know challenges come, there's challenges that I go through and I'm not always the most optimistic person. But when I show up online, I really strive to be the positive light that you're seeing while also being vulnerable and showing you guys my life isn't perfect, but I still try to put the positive spin on it. And so I've battled with this, this mindset of like, like, how do you be this positive influential light for people because there's so much darkness in the world, but then not come off like you're just always perfect and you have things together. And I've noticed myself get triggered by there's memes and people like, you know, not everything is perfect and people are always talking about the good things and the this and the that. And so I've like self-reflected, like, am I one of those people? Do I fall victim of always being positive and showing the good side? And I had to just realize like, I just do me. Like I show the good, bad and the ugly but I really try to take the positive spin on everything and what my point of that is is that um when it comes to to living your life it's like like yes you might not be liked by everybody and yes you might annoy people because you're always so positive and focusing on the positive side of things but why not live like that like why not because it makes life so much better like like I wish I shared this recently and I share this often life is hard like it's hard to be in life in general but it's 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 going to be hard um and it's so interesting because yesterday somebody said it and I'm like yep that's exactly like I feel that way what did they say but they were like it's hard to be a mom for example oh it was at karate it was the karate instructor's mom she's like it's hard being a mom and running a business that's hard because you got to balance the two and you got to blah 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 she's like but it's it's hard to be a mom and not have anything that you're focusing on and not do anything for yourself and i was like yes that's exactly what i'm trying to tell people when i say life is hard choose your heart you either get to choose the heart of life being hard and like shitty things happening to you and you being like this is hard this sucks this is not like like everything about this sucks and my life sucks and that can be hard and you can just stay in the heart of like buying into that and, and continuing to profess that into your life or you could say life is freaking hard and this sucks but I'm gonna find the positive in everything that happens to me and I'm gonna be the positive light in my life and I'm going to see the the positive no matter how i can like like however i possibly can i'm gonna see the positive and so you get to choose what way you do life are you going to blame shame and complain or the way i choose my life is i'm just gonna take full responsibility for my life in entirety there's nothing that can ever happen to me in my life that i'm not going to take responsibility for own my power and say okay how did i create this what do I want to do next? This sucks, or this is amazing, or whatever the case might be. But today we're talking about stuff that's not amazing because it makes you want to shame, blame, and complain. Um, and look at it like this sucks. So my going back to my challenge as I wrap this up, I want you to pay attention to when you're blaming, shaming, and complaining, spending your time and energy talking about something that already happened, a plane that already took off and left you behind. Now what? Now, what are you going to do? And that's where you, the magic happens. That's where you get to create your life because every shitty situation is an opportunity to reinvent who you are and to like find the light moving forward and to find the positive side and to learn the lesson and be a stronger version of yourself. And 
move your life forward. And so really that's my challenge to you today is to stop complaining, blaming, and shaming. Take full responsibility of your life and just accept the hard of everything is my fault. Everything is, and, and by my fault, I shouldn't even say that way because I don't believe you should find blame or fault on anyone. Everything is my fault life. I've created this somewhere down the line. I might've professed this, like, like I t I'm teaching my daughter right now. Um, she says, Oh, we don't ever do anything fun. And I'm just looking at her like girl bye, Cause we're always doing something, but that's her reality. That's her perception. But I'm also teaching her you're by saying, Oh, we never do anything fun. You're speaking that over your life. And that's why you're going to continue to see the world from that lens of never doing anything fun. I'm like, what you should be doing is focusing on the things that you do do that you feel are fun. And I ask her in that moment, I'm like, so if you feel that way, that's fair. So what can we do that would be fun? What do you want to do right now that would create fun? And then she doesn't know. So I'm like, you're boring. Like if you've ever heard that saying, if you're bored, you're a boring person. That's what I'm teaching her. Like if you can't create fun for your life, then that's your fault. That's your problem because you're either missing the gratitude and the fun that you have right in front of you, or you're failing to go and create opportunities for yourself. And so it goes for life. Life. Like how often are you professing things over your life and not, not even realizing it. And then when it manifests itself, you're blaming all these outside things, not really that not realizing that that's what you've been thinking all along. You've been thinking life sucks. I'm a victim. Nothing good ever happens to me. I'm always getting burned. I'm always getting the short end of the stick. If you're thinking those things, that's what you become. That's what you create in your life. So you get to change your thinking today. And, and from today moving forward, you get to say, I am the leader of my future. I am the person who creates everything that happens to me. And that's when you get to go in and just dial into how are you thinking? Who are you surrounding yourself with? What are you doing with your time? What choices are you making? What, what words are you speaking over yourself? What thoughts are you letting control your brain? And, and you get to de decide what your destiny is. So all of that being said, um, I'm going to end here, but I want to also make sure that if you haven't already seen the invitation to the five day challenge that like perfectly segued because that's exactly what we're going to do for five days. We're going to act at like, we're going to do five days of action steps of stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop robbing your power by looking at the, yeah, yourself from the lens of other people. And each day there will be a, a small fun exercise that will help you just start implementing how to tap into your authentic self, your power, your gifts, and be um, be in that zone of genius that you were created to be in so that you can stop looking outside and be like, they have everything. They're the best mom. They're the best wife. Their relationship is this. Their house is this. Their money is that. Their business is this. And stop looking at what everybody else has and start looking at you have everything within you to create whatever it is you actually want, but you're spending your energy comparing yourself to other people and focusing on they have this and I don't, I'm a victim. And so you get to change your mindset. So the link is in my bio. If you're interested in that, it's a five day challenge. We start on Monday and, um, and it'll just be really fun to, to activate and do together as a group. It's free. All you do is just put your name and email so that you get the daily um, prompts and, and you can join in the Facebook group if you want to do that. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. I can't wait. And um, I hope that this was helpful for you. If this was helpful for you, please tag somebody in it, share it. Um, it'll be on YouTube so you can catch it out, um, catch it and you can share the link to people, um, but share it with somebody who you think it could bless. And I appreciate you guys for being here with me today. Have a good one. And I will see you um, next Wednesday for Girl Talk with Crystal and of course online. And hopefully I'll see you Monday on the five day challenge.